All right. My name is Thomas, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I'm in recovery from pride and unbelief, and I still tr struggle with total surrender. Let me pray right quick. Heavenly Father, dear God, I thank you. Tonight, Lord, I surrender this story, my story, to you. Use it to touch someone's heart and heal them, Lord, like you healed me. I surrender to you tonight, Lord. I love you, and I need you, and it's about you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for having mercy on me. Amen. I was raised in a Christian home, but it was a broken home. My mother and my stepfather took us kids to church every Wednesday and twice on Sunday. We were Pentecostal. I saw and heard a lot of things while going to church. I remember watching a movie at church titled Burning Hell. I was about six. Yes, I was afraid. I was afraid of going to hell. Fear is powerful. My mom led me, a little six-year-old boy, to Jesus that night. Looking back, no wonder I was a mess. Fear and dread would haunt me throughout my childhood. It was not until my first step study that I came face to face with my biggest fear. Lesson one, question four. What was your family's secret? This stopped me in my tracks. Forty-seven years later, I tried to bury it under years of coping and hiding. My struggle, false pride, was just covering up that secret. Just under that surface of my pride was my hurt. The problem with my pride was each time I got hurt, my pride grew bigger and bigger. It had gotten so big, I could no longer see around it. I was blinded by, by, by my own self, my own false sense of pride. During the step study, I had gotten to the point that I could no longer deny my hurt. It never went away. It never got healed. It just collected more and more hurts. The secret was my stepfather, our pastor, was a sexual predator. And over the years, he had victimized numerous women and children in our church. He even victimized children in his own home. Celebrate Recovery Lesson 1, Denial. I read it. I realized it. I had been in denial for 47 years. Yes, he had hurt me too. My stepfather and pastor became a stumbling block to my faith in God. Even at the young age of eight, I knew what he was doing was wrong, but I was just too afraid to tell anyone. I dreaded my stepfather from that day on, so I did not know what to believe about God, Jesus, or Christians anymore. I tried very hard not to get noticed through school. I never excelled at anything. I just wanted to disappear. Shame was my only friend. At the age of 16, we stopped going to church as a family. And that was okay with me because I hated going to church. I viewed everyone at church as hypocrites. Church was only for the weak and the fakers. That's what I thought. My real father was alive and he came and got me from time to time. Everything, everything seemed great. He had money. He always had a new car. He had boats, motorcycles. What more could a teenage kid want? Stuff that money could buy. I idolized my real dad. My real dad, well, he wasn't a Christian. He drank beer, smoked cigarettes, used bad language, and told dirty jokes. Man, he was cool. As for me, I wasn't cool. He was popular. He had friends at every bar he took me to. I, was, I always had a lot of fun whenever he took time for me. One of my saddest memories about my real dad was how often and how hard he would cry about missing his kids when he had had too much to drink. Watching my hero cry like a baby, that just left me more confused. This man was who I wanted to be like when I grew up. I didn't understand it then, but he was hurting on the inside. My real dad was a broken and lonely man. He needed Jesus. Thank you, God, for your mercy. On his 70th birthday, my dad died in my arms. He had received Jesus Christ as Savior just a few months earlier. God is so good. I 
around the age of 19, I left home and got my own place. I could do whatever I wanted to do. Man, that seemed great. I did party a bit, but drugs and alcohol were really not my thing. I liked power, money, and influence. I had gotten a good job with the prison department as a correctional officer, and I'd also joined the Air Force Reserve. I wanted, all I wanted to do was work hard and play hard, and that is what I did. I never really had a steady girlfriend or even thoughts of getting married. All those years of being controlled by someone else, that was not for me. I also learned how not to be taken advantage of anymore. I learned how to strike first and hard at whatever I wanted. A good time, that was all I wanted. Looking back, it's a wonder I'm still alive. I have to admit it, I didn't respect women at all. I saw them as a resource to prove to myself that I was a man, not that hurt little boy anymore. I took full advantage of any friendly smile that came my way. I didn't realize it, but I had a sexual impurity problem. I had often heard coworkers and fellow servicemen bragging about the things that I was doing. I found myself living a very sin-filled life. I was taking advantage of anyone that came into my world. My behavior, it was just out of control. One night while laying in my, in my bed, I saw the devil. He was standing beside my bed looking at me. He wasn't that scary monster I was so afraid of from my youth. He was small in statue like a leprechaun. I remember him pointing his finger and saying, you keep on playing around and I will get you back. Wow, that got my attention. Up to that point, I had doubted that God was real, but Satan, just look around. His handiwork is everywhere. I remember accepting Jesus so long ago. He was still with me. I think I prayed that night. After working five years as a correctional officer, I resigned from the prison, and I rolled in basic law enforcement training. I wanted to be a cop. Why? Because cops are cool, and they have real power. And I had a taste of power, and I liked it, and I wanted to meet more girls. I met a girl at school. She was very different than the girls I normally went after. She was nice and sweet, and she wasn't working that angle looking for a daddy for those kids at home. I really wanted to stop all that carousing and settle down anyways. I was almost 30. So we got married, and we have been together for 28 years. Thank you, baby. I love you. I started to go into church with her, and life was great. God was really blessing us. But one day, I remember the preacher making a comment and offending me and caused me to doubt Christian behavior again. So I just quit going to church. Life went on, and we tried to go back into church from time to time, but I just did not see the need for God or church in my life. My faith grew cold again. I was looking for perfect people. I should have been looking for a perfect savior. Trying to move forward in my career choices, I often look back at my life thinking I should be further along. I should have more. I went back to the prison department, this time as an electronics technician. As my skills grew, so did my opportunities to advance. After a few years, I became a supervisor, and then I took over the maintenance department at some very large prisons. Being a former correction officer and my military background, I knew how to get people to work and how to get things done. I was connected. I soon became self-absorbed thinking that I was the best, always comparing myself to people with lesser skills. I had a talent for making fast and correct decisions until one day I was called into the main office. An employee filed a complaint against me. I was being relocated to a different facility pending an investigation. Facing a discrimination charge, I was in total shock. Everything was going so good at work. I didn't remember discriminating anyone. Looking back, I do remember having some unpleasant words with a subordinate. She had told me that I treated her like a child and she did not appreciate it. I only said, I'm sorry, and I dismissed the event. This was the event that would bring me to celebrate recovery. Confused and feeling abandoned, I needed help. I was the guy that always had the answers. I was in total control, and now I 
was lost and alone. Shunned by my network of work contacts, I was under investigation for months, displaced and removed, left with no answers. My mind was open to any hint of what might, of any hint of what might was really going on. Satan began filling my mind with his poison. Up to this point, I had no enemies, but now I seem that I had plenty of them. My lowest point was conspiring in my mind to commit murder. My sin took me to a place that I did not want to go. I dreamed and planned my next move. My mind was full of revenge. I had thought it over and over. How was I going to hurt all those people that had set me up? Oh, but God had different plans for my future. I had been coming to Temple Church, and Jesus was coming alive in me. I was learning more and more about him and his plan for me. I remember praying on the way to work. Lord, break me and remake me. You're the potter. I'm the clay. Well, God Almighty answered my prayers. He broke this clay pot. I remember the Holy Spirit prompting me to apologize to this person at work. I had hurt her, and I didn't even know it. Frankly, I didn't even care. My false sense of pride blinded me from the truth. Pride. That was my sin. Pride. That was Satan's sin, too. I had become just like him. My sin took me somewhere I did not want to go. I had been picked on. I had been picked on by people almost all my childhood. I learned as an adult how to strike the first blow. See, I had plenty of ammo stored up from all those attacks. I no longer would be victimized by anyone. I had a shield, and it was pride. It defended me. It protected me. It had become my savior. In CR, we say, hurt people, hurt people. Well, that is so true. I had been hurt so much that I started to hate people. I even hated myself. Pride had consumed me. Principle one reads, realize that I am not God. At the time, I knew there was a God. I just did not know him, nor did I have a need for him. I had become my own God. Most of my adult life was wasted seeking out sinful pleasure. I had stumbled hard and had absolutely no faith in Christianity. Church was for the weak, and I was no longer weak. I did not know how much I needed the Lord in my life. Physically and financially, I was doing fine, but spiritually, I was a dead man. I knew that I struggled with pride, so I started coming to this new Celebrate Recovery program for people with a variety of issues. I did not have any addi addiction issues, but there was that pride thing. Pride almost cost me my career over a misunderstanding. I still remember the Holy Spirit leading me to make amends to that coworker. Me, I wasn't in the wrong. Why should I apologize to her? I learned a very important lesson while attending Celebrate Recovery. Sometimes it is better to have freedom than, it, than to hold on to the right to be right. That time, I made the wrong choice. I chose to hold on to my right to be right. It did not matter what I had done or hadn't done. I had lost control over my life. My life had become unmanageable. Looking back, this was the best thing that could ever happen to me. Almost losing everything I'd worked for, 25 years of working it my way, just got washed away in minutes. I finally realized it. I am not in control of anything. My efforts were all in vain and void of merit. Thank you, God, for humbling me and answering my prayers. I was coming to temple at the time and I was praying, God, break this clay pot and remold me into the man that you would have me be. This experience made me choose him or me. What I had learned at temple led me right to him. I prayed out in my desperation, Help me, Lord. That's when I knew for sure he was always with me. January 22nd, 2016, I took my first of many blue surrender chips. On it, I wrote pride, 
unforgiveness, shame, and doubt. As I look at my large ring of CR chips, I can see the amazing work that Jesus Christ has done in me. Every one of these chips represents a special event in my new life. Principle 7 reads, reserve a daily time for God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and the power to gain, power to follow his will. I desperately want to know God. Jeremiah 29, 13 reads, if you earnestly seek me, you will find me. John 14, 21 reads, He who loves me is loved by my Father, and I will reveal myself to him. My life verse is 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7, and it reads, In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. I was a man that grew to hate people. I even hated myself. When I was lost and alone, Jesus comforted me. He loved me, and he rescued me out of my prison of fear and shame. He restored my soul. He has given me peace, and his joy lives in me. He gave me a purpose, and that purpose is for him to love people through me. After 28 years of working in the prison system in North Carolina, God has taken me back into the prisons one more time, but this time as a witness for him through Celebrate Recovery Inside. How ironic is that? <laughs> God is using a man that hated the system he worked for, the people he worked with, and the people he was paid to protect. God is using me to bring his hope and healing to those that have not been forgotten. Let me ask you, do you really want freedom from your hurts, habits, and hang-ups? Then get into a step study. This is where I face my fears, my hurts, and my past. Only with God's help was I able to step out of my denial and admit to myself I was broken and I could not fix or cover up my hurt any longer. I had to get honest with myself, with God, with someone that I trust. Completing the step study process, I was even able to forgive that person that hurt me the most. Forgiveness does not excuse what my stepfather did. Forgiveness did set me free from the prison of fear and dread. To the newcomer, I don't know what your struggles, but I do know why you're here. You're here for the same reason I'm here. You want to know for sure that God is real and that you matter to him and that he does have the power to help you. When I came to celebrate recovery four years ago, I was alone and secretly struggling with unbelief. Now I find myself surrounded with amazing accountability partners, friends, and Christ-minded believers. To all my brothers and sisters in Christ, if, I've, if we have ever prayed together, talked about Jesus together, or experienced a God moment together, I want you to do me a favor and stand up, please. God is so good. God has revealed himself to me through these wonderful people. Jesus Christ is alive. God is real and celebrate recovery works. God gave me new life. I asked him for it and I accepted it. He didn't care how dirty I was. He only cared about me. 47 years I was stuck in denial and he waited to heal my hurt just because he loves me. I am living proof that God Almighty changes everything. Thanks for letting me share.